All right, guys, so for this video, what I want to take a look at is I want to take a look at some of the common LVS errors that you might see whenever you're doing a cadence layout. So when you're comparing a layout and a schematic in cadence, you're going to be using the tool LVS. And a lot of times, uh, LVS can be kind of the most difficult part of a project because it's not super descriptive about maybe where an error is or what exactly is causing the error. So it can be a little bit tough figuring out where things are. So for this video, I want to go through an example layout uh, just show some common LVS errors, maybe some errors that I've seen a lot before, and just show you maybe some common pitfalls and how you can find things, how you can find errors in LVS. So some of you might actually be able to notice that there are some issues with this layout already. Uh, we're going to get them all fixed, and we're not going to stop until LVS gets matched, okay? So for the first thing, I just want to show you a little bit about what exactly this is. So I've got just a differential amplifier schematic. We've got our two input transistors, an NMOS with a V bias down here, and then uh, two PMOS up here. So this is gonna make up our differential amplifier. We've got one, two, three, four, five transistors in total. So we're gonna be trying to make all of these connect together properly. So this layout is just about done. Uh, you can tell I've used common centroid here. This layout's just about done, but it still has some issues. Now I'm not gonna be concerned with DRC right now because DRC errors are a little bit easier to fix. You just have to maybe move things further away or unflip things or something like that. But LVS can be a little bit trickier. So first thing we need to do, we need to make sure that we re-extract. So I'll go ahead and rerun the extraction here. Uh, we can just forget about these for right now. So we'll rerun the extraction. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and delete all those markers just so we don't get distracted from them and then let's verify lvs we already we've already got lvs open we can run it save and then let's see what it tells us so spoiler alert it's probably going to tell us that the net list failed to match because like i said this layout is already intentionally messed up and yeah, we're just seeing that the lv or net lists have failed to match so if we close this we can take a look at the lvs output so the LVS output tells us quite a bit of information about where things went wrong. So starting off from the very, very top, we can see that we have 11 nets in our layout, and we've only got eight nets in our schematic. So that's already a pretty bad thing. We've got 11 nets in our layout, eight nets in our schematic. That means that we're probably missing some connections in our layout somewhere. So we've got all these different nets that are unconnected, and that's what's causing some issues here. So we're gonna take a look at that. We can also see we've got five terminals in our layout and six terminals, <clears throat> excuse me, six terminals in our schematic. So that could be a problem too because we need the number of terminals to match up. Uh, two PMOS, three NMOS. Uh, the multipliers here will affect these numbers, but I've got four and 12, this looks okay to me. And then something pretty important down here if the net list did fail to match. It also tells us a summary of some bad devices. This isn't telling us super detailed information, but it kind of gives us a sense of how many things we messed up. So in our schematic, both of our PMOS are messed up and two out of our three NMOS are messed up. So let's take a little bit closer look. So the first thing I wanna take a look at are these terminals. So the terminals, we know those need to be 100% matched. This number needs to be matched in our schematic and in our layout. Now, you might be able to say, well, I mean, I don't see any terminals here, and that's because they're turned off. For some reason, the labels are automatically turned off. To turn them back on, you can press E, click on pin names, and then press OK. And now they pop right back up. So you can tell we've got our one, two, three, four, five, six terminals here, okay? Actually, I think we might be, nope, there it is. Okay, so this is our sixth terminal here, this chip VDD. Let's go ahead and just, well, we'll, we'll continue working with this, okay? So now we can see all of our six terminals, so that tells us that maybe there's an issue with one of the nets connected to these terminals if it's telling us we only have five in our layout. So let's look down through here. Now, the schematic and the layout both have similar sections to them. So this is still kind of our summary. It tells us the number of unmatched instances in our layout and our schematic, and then the number of active instances. Now, it also tells us unmatched nets, and the number of active and total nets, and then also our terminals. So you can see we've got three terminals unmatched in our layout and four terminals unmatched in our schematic. And then we have this weird wonky number here, five and six. Now, this is gonna start off with the schematic information. So probe files from the schematic, and it's gonna tell us quite a bit of stuff. So this first one here, devbad.out, this is going to be device bad. So it's gonna tell us the number of devices that are bad and couldn't match. And that's quite a few now. We've got P0, P1, N0, and N2. So if we take a look at our schematic, P0 and P1, 
N0, N1, and N2, we can see that N0 and N2 are having issues. So N1 is good. We don't need to mess with anything connected to N1 just yet. Now, if we scroll a little bit further down, we'll also see this net bad out. So this is going to tell us the nets that aren't matching. So we can see that there's quite a few that aren't matching. So we've got a lot of nets in our schematic that aren't quite matching. And our schematic, we're fairly comfortable that this is correct, right? So we can take a look at this pretty easily, see the connections, and tell that this is either correct or incorrect. So for right now, we're going to assume that our schematic is correct, although you do have to go back and make sure of that yourself. But we're going to assume that this schematic is correct for the time being. So this net bad out is going to tell us which nets in the schematic are having trouble matching. So this is going to be a pretty important one later on. Merge net, uh, sometimes the uh, sometimes whenever it's net listing, it'll actually merge two nets together when it shouldn't. So underneath here, there could be some information under merge net, but this isn't going to be as big of an issue for schematic. But in the layout, there could be some nets merged together, and those will be listed under merge net. Now, term bad is the bad terminals, and that's going to tell us the terminals that are messed up here. So we can see that there's VN plus and VN minus that are in the schematic but not present in the layout. Chip ground failed to match to any terminal in the layout, and chip VDD is not present in the layout. So this is kind of some some something sneaky here. Okay, so all of these can kind of give us a little little bit more hints about where things are at, and I actually like to combine this section with the net bad dot out section. So we can see that VN plus only has one, or sorry, VN minus only has one connection in our uh, in our schematic, and it is having an issue here. Now chip ground as well. Uh, if we find our chip ground in our schematic, it only has five connections. So this can kind of combine to give us some information as well. Now, for the time being, these are all empty. But if those get populated, we can talk a little bit more about those. Now, let's take a look at the layout section. So this layout section here. Under device bad dot out, we can see that it says the number of lines exceeded this, uh, this limit that we have set here. So if you want to see the file, it tells you where exactly you need to go. So if I pop back over to my MOBA XTERM window, and then I just clear the window off, if we take a look, we can actually, <clears throat> if we take a look, we can actually see that there's a folder called LVS. So if we CD into LVS, we'll see that there's a lot of different things here. So this is also where our SI.log and SI.out files are. So if it ever gives you an error telling you to look at these, this is where they're at. Now, if we are taking a look at the layout here, so we're taking a look at the layout, we CD into our layout, and then we LS, we can see that there's a lot of stuff here. So we have our audit out, dev bad dot out, all this other stuff here. Now, if we use the cat command, that's catalog, and it, we can actually use it on, let's double check, dev bad dot out here, dev bad dot out, it will actually output all of the different devices that we have that don't cross match. Now, because our layout treats each individual transistor as its own, there's a lot of different devices here that don't cross match, which is why we're seeing all this stuff. Um, so this maybe gets a little bit overwhelming in the beginning, but we can make more sense of it later on. Now we can scroll down and see that there's a lot of nets in our layout that are bad. We can see that there's a lot of terminals in our layout that are bad. And this is going to give us sort of a foundation on which we can start exploring. So the first thing that I want to start exploring, devices can be a little bit tricky because that could be wiring, it could be terminals, it could be all sorts of different things. Nets can also be tricky as well because there could be a lot going on. First thing I want to start off with is I want to start off with terminals. So if we start off with terminals, what it's going to allow us to do is it's going to kind of let us narrow down where things are at. So let's take a look at the different terminals that we have. So if we scroll up, oh, so if we scroll down to where termbad.out is, we can see VN plus in the schematic is not present in the layout. So VN plus is not present in the layout. That should tell us something pretty important. So we can see that VN plus is in fact in the schematic. And let's try and find VN plus in the layout, okay? So it's pretty easy. And you might even say, we know it's gonna be near these uh, common centroid and MOS transistors. And we can see, we see our N plus right here. Well, the tricky thing is, this is not VN plus. So whenever we assigned this a net name, I just named it N plus instead of VN plus. And then, you know, you might have thought, oh, well, you know, Cadence is pretty sophisticated. It can work that out. Now, Cadence is sophisticated, but it lets you make your own mistakes. It's going to assume that you are smart and that you know what's going on. So if you tell it that this is N plus, it's not going to change it for you. It's going to say the engineer must know what they're doing. So if we click on this and press Q, 
I made all the other layers just disappear. That way I could get access to this one pin here. And if we press Q, what we'll see is that for the terminal name, if we change it to VN plus, and I'm gonna do the same for this other one here. If we take a look at the all view, this other one is named N minus, and in our schematic, it should be VN minus. So we'll do the same thing again, change this one here so that it is VN minus, and capitalization does matter here. So capitalization is super important. Like I said, if it's not exactly the same, it will tell you that there's an error. Okay, so now we've got VN plus and VN minus. Let's re-extract and rerun LVS, although we already have the window open. I'll close our output because that's not updated anymore. And we're gonna rerun LVS. Now, hopefully this is going to fix maybe some of the problems that we had. Okay, so hopefully this should fix some of the problems, maybe at least make some of those terminal bad errors go away. So let's take a look at our output now that it's run. So we still have the same number of nets and everything like that because all we've done is rename some terminals. But if we scroll down, we can see that the number of unmatched terminals is a lot lower. And if we scroll even further down, we can see that now we're not getting any sort of terminal errors for VN plus and VN minus. We're not getting any of those terminal errors, even back down here, we're not getting those N plus, N minus errors. So that's one error that we've already got fixed, okay? That's one error that we've got fixed. So let's go back and look at our full layout once again, okay? So we're gonna go back and look at our full layout, and then we're gonna take a look at our output again. So let's stick with the terminals for now. Let's stick with the terminals and let's see what we can find out from just our terminals, okay? So first one, chip ground. Terminal chip ground in the schematic failed to match to any terminal in the layout, okay? So we should be asking ourselves first, do we actually have chip ground in the layout? And yes, we do. So we do have chip ground in our layout. Now, notice it says it failed to match any terminal in the layout. Not that it didn't appear in the layout, it just says failed to match. If it didn't appear in the layout or if there was another issue, it would say is not present in the layout like this one for chip VDD is. So chip ground failed to match. Let's take a look at the net bad. So if we take a look at term bad, it just tells us that chip ground is a terminal that's having problems. Net bad might tell us a little bit more information. So if we look under chip ground, in our schematic, we have got five connections. And that makes sense. If we go ahead and take a look at our schematic, we can see that chip ground, the pin does count as one connection, and then it's connected to the source and body. So that's one, two, three. And it's also connected to the bodies of these other two transistors. So this is four and this is five. Those are our five connections. Now, if we take a look at our layout, our layout mention here under NetBad, uh, this is still, no, this is for our layout. Okay, so under chip ground, net does not match. It has five connections. Okay, so now we need to figure out what in the world is happening here because it says it has five connections, but in reality, it might not. Okay, so if you remember in the layout, it treats each individual transistor as its own entity, right? So it's going to treat each individual transistor as its own entity, and it's not necessarily concerned uh, with the numbers, right? So it can do some math and it can work itself out where if the numbers are mismatched, it's still going to be okay because it can figure out, hey, there's multiple transistors here in the schematic. We need to change the numbers around a little bit when we're comparing the two. So because we have those multiple transistors, this could actually be affecting some things. So if we take a look at our layout, there's four bodies here, four bodies here, and then four bodies for this NMOS as well. So we can see that there may be some issues, <clears throat> excuse me, there are maybe some issues with chip ground. So that's what we're gonna start off with next. We're gonna start off by finding chip ground and maybe seeing if we can find any errors. So if we zoom in, we can see chip ground, it's right here. So it's on the same metal layer. If we take a look at chip ground and press Q, it's on the metal one layer, which is what we want. So it's on the metal one layer, and we can see that it is actually connected to these three transistors here. Okay, so it's connected to the bodies of these transistors. And <clears throat> is it connected to the, or yes, it's connected to the body of all three of these transistors, and it's got some other various connections and things like that. But it's not only connected to the bodies of transistors, it is also connected to the source of this transistor. So let's take a look at the source here. So if we kind of zoom in and we wanna make sure that all the connections are made, we zoom in and we can see that this is the transistor whose source we are trying to connect to. 
Now, in this case, we have our, uh, excuse me, we have our, <clears throat> we have our, uh, excuse me, the source of these upper transistors connected to these three. So this is actually the drain. These sources are in the middle. Now, because we ran out of metal layers, we hopped up to metal two with a via. So we hopped up to metal two, have a connection from this source to this source via metal two. And then this moves over to our ground. But there's something missing here. Right, So right now we just have a metal two layer kind of hovering over the guard ring. But the guard ring is down on metal one. So these two are actually not touching. So these two aren't touching at all. So what we need is we need a via. So we need a via to go from M1 to M2. And let's just leave it as one via for right now. And if we just set that right there, and then we can re-extract and rerun LVS. We'll rerun and hopefully maybe that chip ground error will get fixed. Maybe we can even see the number of connections that it has or something like that. So once this gets done running, we can open up our output. The net list still failed to match, but that's okay. We can see that now one of these nets has actually disappeared in our layout. So one of these nets has disappeared in the layout and that's good because we actually ended up connecting these floating nets here. So we had an extra net that was the source for this transistor. We ended up connecting it to ground. So we connected two nets together. So now our nets are getting closer to matching. Now we can see that our terminals still aren't quite matched. And if we scroll down, what we'll see is that now that term bad for chip ground has disappeared. And we're going to expect the same down here. So now term bad for chip ground has disappeared. Okay, so now Let's stick with term bad because we're almost done getting all of these errors fixed. Now, what we can see, chip VDD, and this is underneath the schematic, chip VDD is not present in the layout. So it is telling us that it is not present in the layout whatsoever. And if we scroll back down to our layout, we see that term bad has just disappeared. So whenever this thing generates, <clears throat> whenever this thing generates nets, it can sometimes cause issues like this if we make a critical mistake. So it might actually seem as if chip VDD has disappeared when it actually hasn't. So let's take a look here. We remember that our layout had one less terminal, right? So that would explain why it's not down here because that chip VDD seeming, seemingly disappeared. So let's take a look at our chip VDD. Let's go find our chip VDD and see where exactly it is. So if we zoom in on chip VDD, we can see it's connected to this PMOS guard ring click on it and press Q. It's on metal one, which is what we want. So now let's kind of track down some of these connections because we think maybe there's something wrong here. So we know it's connected to the bodies of these transistors. That's just intrinsic and it's connected to the bodies here as well. We know that the sources for these transistors should be connected to it. And if we take a look, we should be able to see that, excuse me, we should be able to see that this transistor is connected to the source. So this source or this source pen of the transistor is connected to the guard ring, but that's not the case down here. So maybe this is another error. So let's click metal one, add a path, I believe it's 1.2 thickness, and then we can just drag that back down here. Now let's re-extract and rerun LVS. And this can get tedious at times, but like I said, LVS is a pretty powerful tool and it will make sure that the devices you send out to be fabricated will match the schematic, hopefully as closely as possible. So we still get failed to match, but let's check at the output. Now we've decreased the number of nets again. So this net here, this source pin for the PMOS, it was not connected anywhere. And because it's not connected anywhere, it's counting our VDD net. And then for example, if I delete this trace in our schematic, it's going to count this pin as its own net because it's not connected anywhere else, which we know it should be connected to chip VDD. So let's save and check that. Now we can scroll down and what we'll still see, what we should still see, term bad, okay? Chip VDD is not present in the layout and V out and the schematic fail to match to any terminal in the layout. So now it seems as if we've created another error by fixing this thing, uh, but we're still plugging along and fixing problems in our layout. So let's take a look at chip VDD one more time because it's still saying it's not present in the layout, right? So it's still saying it's not present in the layout. Let's go take a look at the layout now. So let's start again at chip VDD. 
we can see that it's connected to these two sources and then it's also got this guard ring going around. Now, hopefully you may have spotted this earlier, but this little wire here, this blue trace, this metal one, this is connected to the drain of this PMOS here. And there should be no connection from the drains of either of these PMOS to chip VDD, especially maybe this one, because then that's shorting our V out to VDD, but we don't want VDD connected to either of these drains. So whenever we routed this metal, we actually routed it right over the guard ring. Now, if we actually take a look at a process cross-section, if we stop and take a look at a process cross-section, what we can see is that these are all of our different metal layers, right? So each metal layer is connected and it's all in the same plane. And then we have vias that can take us between each metal layer. So this, for example, could be a via from, uh, let's say, let's call this one our metal one. This could be a via from metal one to metal two. Now, what you can also tell from here is that if you have a trace in metal one, there's no option to just make a tiny little bump and go over it. If it is in metal one and they're touching each other, they are 100% going to be short circuited together. They are made out of the same metal. There's a low resistance path between them. It's a short circuit. So if, for example, I needed to route this trace over this trace here, I don't want them connected. I can't just connect them across. Let's see if I can draw on here. I can't just connect them across. Oops. So I can't just connect them across like this. I actually have to go up to metal two and then go over the top of it. So it's going to be kind of like a bridge. If you just think that in this layout, I can simply connect right across this guard ring. That's not quite right. This will treat it as a short circuit between the two of these, and that will actually cause a lot of problems. So we need to delete this trace here. Now you might notice that conveniently there is already a VA here, and that's because we have some connections later on, but that makes it really, really easy to make this connection. If we use the stretch tool on this connection all the way back here, I can just move it on over, connect it there, and then let's re-extract and rerun LVS. We'll rerun LVS. While that's running, I'm going to close out some of these old outputs because that can clutter our screen. I'll go ahead and close that as well. So we should be hearing from it soon. The netlist still failed to match, but let's see if we've maybe fixed that VDD error that we were seeing. So if we go to term bad, now we can see that we don't have any terminal errors in our schematic. We don't have any terminal errors in our layout. So we've made quite a bit of progress here. So we still have some errors. It's not 100% matched. You can see that actually removing this short circuit increased the number of nets. So intrinsically, short circuits decrease the number of nets open circuits will increase the number of nets. So if you have no other information and you're looking at your layout or you're looking at your LVS report, for example, if you see that maybe there are eight nets here and nine nets in your layout, so eight nets in your schematic and nine nets in your layout, that means you're probably missing a connection somewhere. If there's eight nets in your schematic and seven nets in your layout, that means that there's probably a short circuit and that's what you should be looking for. But Let's continue looking at some of these other errors that we have. So now we can look at device bad, but that still doesn't tell us too much information. Let's take a look at net bad. So let's compare the nets in the layout versus the schematic. So the schematic says that net 19 has three connections. So if we take a look at our schematic, uh, we have our nets annotated right now, thankfully. And we can see that net 19 is all the way down here at the drain of this bottom PMOS. So net 19 is the drain of our bottom PMOS and the source for our, <clears throat> excuse me, and the source for our common centroid NMOS. I believe I'm not even saying PMOS. It's the drain for this NMOS here and then the source for the common centroid NMOS. So that gives us a hint that maybe there's something wrong with that connection. And if we scroll down to the bottom, we can see that there is still bad nets here, but these numbers don't necessarily match, right? So we have net 10, net seven, net nine, and net eight. Okay, now net 19 has three connections, net 15 has four connections. Down here at the bottom, net 8 has one, net 9 has one, net 10 has three, net 7 has four. Okay, so we're thinking that maybe there are some misconnections here because we have this mismatched number of nets. So we have no idea what net 8, 10, seven, eight, nine, 10, whatever. We have no idea which nets these are 
because if we go and look at our layout, it doesn't tell us like it did on the schematic. It doesn't tell us that certain nets are different things. It only tells us that this is metal one or metal two. But we can take a look at our extracted view. So if you open your library manager, open your extracted view, what you can do is that, for example, if I take this net here, I can click on this route and you'll notice it highlights every single connection that is made. So I can tell that it is actually connected down here, potentially at this drain. I can tell that it is connected here to this, uh, to this little VA here. I can also tell that at this drain it is connected. And if I press Q on it, I go to connectivity. It tells us that this net name is actually V out. So this is our V out net. Now, right now we haven't seen any issues with our V out terminal, but that doesn't mean that we don't have any maybe misconnections or anything like that. Now, let's say if we take a look at our LVS report, we can see that net eight is maybe having a problem. Net eight it isn't, doesn't look like it's connected anywhere. It just has this single connection. Now, how can we find net eight? Well, one option is that you can just sort of click around until you eventually end up finding it under the connectivity and net name, or you can use tools, find slash replace. We're going to be looking for any shape, and then we're going to add criteria. The only criteria that we want it to meet, we want the net name to be equal to eight. Now we can select all. Oh, there's nothing to select. Oh, find the, okay. You have to use the find button first and then select all. And this tells us that this is our net eight. So it looks like the drain, it looks like the drain for one of our transistors is only connected here. Okay, so it looks like it is only connected between these two. So let's go back and take a look at our layout. So if we take a look at our layout, we can keep our extracted view open on the side. We can see that the drain here and the drain here are connected by what looks like a metal two trace. So this is our drain. This is what looks like our metal two trace. And then we can see that maybe we were wanting this output to actually go to the gate of this uh, to the gate of these PMOS. But it looks like we maybe made a tiny error and we missed this connection here. So there's this little bitty gap. Hopefully DRC would give this away, but I haven't been using DRC for this video. But we can just scoot this gap right over. And now we're actually making this connection. So let's try and re-extract. And before I extract, I'm going to close the extracted view just to make sure that it's closed and we don't think that we're going to mess anything up by having the extracted view open. Let's close our output and then we will rerun LVS. So even though it was just a little tiny space and you'd think Cadence might be able to know that those are the same, it certainly does not. So whenever you run DRC, it would definitely tell you that these two are close together and hopefully that would give you a little bit of a hint, but it's not always going to be 100% explicit. So using the extract and find and replace tool is very, very beneficial. So now we've made another connection that we were supposed to have. So now our number of nets has decreased. And we're getting really, really close to the end. So now we only have two bad NMOS here, two out of 12. So we've only got two bad NMOS. It looks like it's just gonna be maybe one device that's bad in our, oh, excuse me, in our ex or layout view. And we can take a look at this net bad out. So this net bad dot out, or this net bad dot out information. Now we know that it's still net 19 in our, yes, we know it's net 19 in our schematic. So that's still this drain of this bottom NMOS and the sources of these common centroid NMOS. So we know that it's going to be somewhere here, we think. So right now we could have a pretty tough time because we don't know exactly where these different nets are, but we can use our extracted view again. So let's take a look one more time. We know that it's net nine and net seven in the layout that are having problems. So let's take a look for these different nets. So let's go to our library manager, open up our extracted view. You could also just open this up for read if you wanted to, but I'm just gonna use it here. We use tools, find and replace. We're looking for any shape with the net name. Let's take a look at this net seven. Okay, so we're gonna be looking for net seven. Then we'll hit find and select all. Uh-oh, let's try it one more time. So we'll do find, select all. It looks like it's having trouble even finding it. So maybe we should take a look at net nine instead. Let's see if we can find net nine. Maybe we need to close this and reopen it. I think maybe I had it open on our layout view or something like that. Let's try and find net nine. Okay, let's go back to net seven. So that's find. So net seven, 
Net7, right now it's highlighted. It is connected to these three terminals of this NMOS down here. Remember we said this is the drain. This is what we're expecting. It's actually connected. And then it's connected to the three source pins for each of these, <clears throat> excuse me, it's connected to the three source pins for each of these P or excuse me, NMOS here. Now, if we take a look at maybe net number nine, let's take a look at net number nine and we try and find it. What we can see is that net number nine is actually this one here. Let me double check and make sure that we're actually looking at the right ones. So net nine only has one connection. Net seven doesn't match because it has four connections. If we take a look at net nine, net nine, let's make sure we deselect all. So net nine is just this drain pin here. And for common centroid, this actually needs to be connected all the way around to this other drain. So let's take a look at our layout and maybe see where we went wrong. So if we start in this top right drain, we can see that there's a via taking it to metal two. That's going down, down, down here. And then we route all the way to the side, but then again, we don't have another via. So let's just copy this via that I see here. Copy this via and then we'll move it down there. Now it's still not quite connected because our metal twos aren't connecting, but if we move it down there, then we should be connected just about perfectly. So we'll re-extract and then rerun LVS. I keep forgetting that I already have it open. Uh, for our extracted view, I'm just gonna close it. It's gonna ask if I wanna save. I'm just gonna say no. Close that one again, open our LVS window and let's run it. And we'll see if we have any issues. If we do have issues, we might want to re-extract because like I said, uh, it can be a little bit confusing on whether you do want to save or if you don't want to save, depending on how it, uh, how it treats the version that it re-extracts. So if we take a look at our output, we can see that everything is just about the same. We're getting these same nine and seven errors. So it looks like we need to actually re-extract. Let's make sure our extracted view is closed this time. Re-extract, rerun, and now let's just be patient and see what ends up happening. So hopefully, I believe this is the last error. So now we can actually see that the net lists match. So the net lists do in fact match. And if you click output, you can see that now we have eight nets after we got that last one connected, six terminals, four PMOS and 12 NMOS. It is a little bit strange. And that's one of the things that might be a little bit frustrating is that it says these sources can't get 100% matched for some reason. And then the reason is actually because the drains weren't connected properly. So there are a lot of things that could be causing problems, but if you get confused, it's a good idea to just kind of start small and then build it up from there. Cause it's a lot easier to get two or three transistors to match than it is to get 20. So like I said, if you guys have any questions about how to use the layout view, how to use the LVS report to find up any problems or how to use the extracted view, send me an email or leave a comment down in the comment section below. Uh, and, if you get, like I always like to mention, if you guys are having problems uh, studying the LVS report, studying those files that it can generate, as I showed uh, on MOBA X term, you can actually find those different files here. So if I maybe look at our dev bad out one more time, we're expecting it to be empty. But you can look at all these files. You can look if you're having issues. If you're having issues with LVS itself, you can look in your LVS folder at the si.log or the si.out file, and that can give you a little bit more information to help you debug. But like I said, um, if you guys do have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm always happy to help out. But other than that, thank you guys for watching.